Hey there, David Gordon from Theater Mania here. It is Friday, October 23rd. I am here with the wonderful Luba Mason, uh, one of the stars of Girl from the North Country. Uh, you just released an album called Triangle. I sure did. It is, <laughs> it is a uh, lovely album. Thank uh, you. Everybody to go out to listen to it. Uh, tell me about when you put, the, put it together. Um, I actually recorded this in 2018. Mm -hmm. Um, but I put it together in 2017 because it was such an unusual concept. Uh, the lineup is just voice, vibraphone, and bass, and that's it. How did you How did you pick those that instrumentation? Well, my my previous record, I had a six piece band, mm -hmm. and it was really tough getting gigs and making a living at it. Yeah. Um, so. Um, my producer that I chose for this for this album, Renato Neto, he lives in uh, Brazil. I had collaborated with him before. He's keyboardist for Prince. Um, he said, well, why don't you downsize? And I said, he says, downsize to a trio. And I said, oh, everybody does voice, voice, piano and bass. Everybody does, and drums, you know, everybody does that. I said, I have a vibraphone in my band now and I'd love to continue using that. And he said, um, we'll keep using that. He says, and just add the bass. <laughs> and I just kind of sat there and I thought about it. I'm, th I'm trying to hear it in my head. And I'm yeah. like, okay, let me, all right, I'm going to give it a try. And so in 2017, I put together myself and a vibraphonist and a bassist. And we started doing some gigs and clubs just to get an audience reaction, just to right. see if this was working. And we, we got a song list together, a very eclectic song list. So, you know, people were familiar with some songs so they could get the, get the idea. Um, you know, we, we did, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, Ticket to Ride, a, a Beatles song, you yeah. know, it's a song that everybody knows, but now they're like, oh, this is just voice, vibraphone, and bass, you know? And interestingly enough, and to my happy surprise, the people really dug the, this lineup. They were like, oh, I didn't know like a bass could be a melody line. I didn't, I, you know, it's the first time I ever listened to just the bass alone or, you know, and we're all exposed. It's a very difficult thing to pull off, you know, sure. limited. It's a real minimalistic approach to music. But um, for like a year we did this and the, the response was so positive. And I said, I got, I got to record this. So we recorded it in 2018, right before I went in for rehearsals for Girl for the, from the North Country down at the Public. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought I would release it after Girl was finished. Yeah. But then there was, but, you know, we were a hit and there was buzz. We were going to Broadway. And I said, oh, let me wait till we go to Broadway. Yeah. But we waited a whole year to go back to Broadway. And then he got shut down. Yeah, and then we were like, we're finally on Broadway. And I'm like, I'm going to release it this year now. And then it was like, we got shut down. So I was really on the fence whether I should release it or not. And I thought, why not? You know, people are at home. I have time. I could really focus on this. Um, and I went for it. So here we are. <laughs> How do you pick... Uh, I only say this because, like, this is the first time I've ever heard a vibraphone for the duration of time that it is on the album. Like, I've never heard a vibraphone that long, I don't think. Wow. It's a beautiful instrument. It is a beautiful instrument. How did you pick that one out of, you know, the the com the, the, six, the sextet that you were working with before? Like, how did you pick the vibraphone out of, instead of, like, a piano or something? Well, I had the vibraphone in my six-piece band beforehand yeah. instead of a piano. Instead of a piano, okay. Right, and it, it automatically gave my band like um, a unique sound. Yeah. Because people automatically think of, you know, a piano in a band. Right. Or a voice and piano. And the vibraphone automatically gives you like a whole nother, a whole nother uh, sound. And I loved it and it kind of made it different and um, yeah, that's why I kept it. And it and it really resonates. You know, it's just a beautiful, beautiful sounding instrument. I want to talk about your track list a little bit. Okay. Um, I'm gonna put it up just so I don't screw it up because you've got a lot of really cool stuff on it. We were talking before. You've got a Frank Lesser song. Yeah. Uh, that I didn't know, uh, and I love Frank Lesser, so it was nice to hear that. You have Ticket to Ride. 
Uh, you have Holland sung about love from the band's visit, which I think yeah. is really cool and unexpected. Uh, I always like to put a song from a Broadway show on my albums. It, yeah. It's my way of just tipping my hats to my roots, really. Yeah. I mean, I started on Broadway and have made a living at it for many years. And um, it's only it's only right to do that, I felt. Yeah. How did you how did you pick the songs that were in this show that are now on the album? Um, I really wanted to challenge this lineup of the vibraphone and bass. I really wanted to throw all kinds of songs and see if they worked. Yeah. So there's a show tune. There's a couple of pop tunes, the uh, Ticket to Ride, and I have a Paul Simon tune on there. I have a Spanish bolero, which is a ballad, a Spanish in Spanish. I have a Slovak folk song. I have a heavy metal tune, Toxicity yes, from I know. the Down. That was like, I, I, you know, when I was with my musical director at the time, I remember saying, okay, you know, we got this song list together. And, and, and of course there's a couple of straight ahead jazz tunes on, on the album as well. I said, I really want something out of left field on here. Yeah. I said, how about like a real heavy rock kind of a tune? And he said, System of a Down. And I said, really? Oh my God. And I, so I listened, I started listening to them and I was like, Jesus, how am I gonna, <laughs> where, which song? And I love Toxicity. I just love the song. And um, I gave it to my musical director at the time, Felipe Fournier. And um, I said, do you think you could do an arrangement for this? And he says, oh yeah, oh yeah. And he came out with it in rehearsal, we did it. And it was like, this works, this really works. Uh, so we're at month eight of the Broadway shutdown. You guys had just opened Girl from the North Country. Right. Uh, you one were, week, one you week. Ran week. Solid, you ran for a solid week. My, solid wife, week. my wife and I, it was our last show before the shutdown. We saw it wow. the night that week. Uh, how much do you miss it? Um, now mm -hmm. I miss it a lot. Now I do. In the beginning of the of the pandemic, you know, in the beginning in March, you know, you know, when you're mm -hmm. opening up a Broadway show, it's it's mayhem before you yeah. open. You know, you're in previews at night, you're doing eight shows shows a week, and you're rehearsing during the day. So it's like this relentless schedule. So by the time you open, you, you just want to take a deep breath and and kind of sink into the show, and you're exhausted. You're yeah. just exhausted. Um, so when we shut down, I thought, oh, I get to have a break maybe for like about three weeks. You know, I'm thinking they're going to close us down for maybe a month max. And I went, okay, we can just kind of relax for a while. But the I I woke up three days later after we shut down with COVID. Oh, I didn't know, I didn't know that. Yeah, about half the cast got it. Oh, and no kidding. So it was, um, it was kind of like... Then I was just nursing myself. I was not really missing yeah. <laughs> that time. I just wanted to take care of myself. And thank God it wasn't uh, serious. I wasn't in the hospital or anything like that. But um, so that took another month. And um, then, you know, in any case, it was really just about getting myself back on my feet. And I'd say about now we have a we have a text thread with right. the cast. And we're always in touch with each other. The producer sends us emails every so often. We get do a Zoom every so often. And when you see everybody's faces and you start communicating, you're just like, wow, I really missed the show. Because it's it's been it's been so much in our DNA for 2008, 18. And, it, and it's so interesting. I first saw that show at the old Vic back when they first started it in London. Oh, wow. And then I saw it at the public, and then we saw it on Broadway right before the shutdown, like I just said. And I thought the Broadway version with you guys, I thought it was like, it was the best version of the show that I'd seen. It felt like the culmination. It felt like everybody was firing on all cylinders. Thank you. It just felt, right. it just felt like, it just felt like the piece had finally figured out what it was and who it needed to be in it and, and all of that. And it's just made me so sad for it because it, I, it it turned into like a really 
beautiful piece of theater. Not that it wasn't before, it had all the elements. I just didn't necessarily think it was all there until I saw it on Broadway. Or I didn't understand what it was until I saw it on Broadway. You're not the first person who said that. I, I yeah. have friends who also saw it at the in London as well. Um, I think with our cast, because we were Americans, yeah. Um, I think I think the story resonated more because it takes place in Duluth, Minnesota, during the Depression. Um, it's Dylan music. Um, I think it just resonated with with our ca our cast, the American cast, more so. I did not see the cast in London, but I heard wonderful things about it. Yeah. Um, also, also, I have to say, I think for our director Connor McPherson, who is brilliant. He tailor made um, the show to our cast, to who he cast in in, yeah. in our ensemble, um, and because he was the author and the director, you know, he had the novelty of of do that. line yeah. changing lyrics, you know, just doing what not lyrics, but you know, just changing the script to really, you know, fit the characters in this show. And um, and I think by then there had already been a London cast. There was a cast in Canada as well, there was a production. So he already had, you know, he had he already like wet his feet with this with this production. He really, you know, got to sink his teeth into it with a couple of casts. And by the time we came along with an American cast, I think he really could was able to really tune in yeah. to the piece. And uh, I think I think that's why people have responded to our version really favorably. Yeah, I want to leave you with the question of: Do you have any good Bob Dylan stories from this whole experience? What do you mean, Bob Dylan? Stories? Well, because I, well, I know he saw it at the public, but he came in under like cover of darkness or something. Yes, he did. He was wearing a hoodie. <laughs> did you meet him? Did you interact with him at all? No, we, not, not, none of us met him. He did not come backstage, uh, but he did uh, send the entire cast on opening night a bottle of his bourbon. Nice. Um, I think it's called Heaven's Heaven's Door. Yeah. Not Heaven's Gate. Heaven's not Door. Heaven's door. I'm talking on Heaven's Door. There it is. Yeah. Um, and he did send a note through the, our stage management that he was looking forward to coming and seeing it again on Broadway. That's nice of him. Oh yeah, it's very rare. Yeah, actually, yeah. He's, a, he's a very private person. He's very shy, from what we've been told and from what we hear. Um, so the the only funny Bob Dylan story I could tell you is, um, you know, there was a question that the New York Times had asked the entire cast if if we were big, huge Dylan fans to begin with, and um, and I said no. <laughs> I, I said no. I really, and it's not that I didn't like him. Right, I, he just wasn't in my wheelhouse, really. Um, so you know, when I got this show, um, you know, I started listening to Bob Dylan music, and I said, "Oh, you know," because because beforehand I was like, "I don't know what the big yeah. deal is about Bob Dylan." You know, what's the big deal? The guy can't really sing that well. Right, <laughs> what I thought. But then I started listening to his music and, you know, just hearing his lyrics. I mean, that just, they're kind of drop dead, you know, grab you. Yeah. Grab you. And I went, okay, oh, now I get it. Now I get this. And, you know, uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan. I mean, he's just, there's, there's so much still that I need to listen to of his catalog. Luba, thanks for your time. Triangle is out now and everybody should go listen to it wherever music can be found. Thank you so much, David, really. Pleasure, be well. You too. Bye. Thanks everybody for watching.